Hey YouTube, Audio Olympian here bringing the sound and video to you today. Coming to you live from Audio Olympia, where the world meets through music, movies, and speakers. Okay, today's video really quick, just got a couple of products I actually wanted to talk about here. Uh, one being the Pioneer uh, VSX 834 receiver. Very nice budget receiver I picked up at um, Best Buy probably a couple of months ago. Just wanted to cover over some things there for anybody if you're looking for a really good uh, budget receiver that has Atmos, DTSX, all the bells and whistles that you would need for um, a budget receiver. And then I wanted to talk about the ADP 1.2. This is a speaker level to line level interface. Um, and this allows you to be able to hook up an external amp if your receiver does not have pre-outs. So if you're ever wondering or we're trying to um, make that work or happen for yourself without having to get a whole new receiver or anything like that, I picked up a couple of these, so I wanted to talk a little bit about it. Uh, I really like them, so that's why I thought I'd share that with you guys. So if this is your first time visiting our channel, we want to thank you. We appreciate you stopping by. We'd love to see you again. So if you would consider hitting that subscribe button and then punching that bell notification, that'll let you know when we drop another video to the tube. So here we have the Pioneer, and this is the VSX 834 AV receiver. I picked it up really quick for just under 400 bucks over at Best Buy. And the reason I did it was I wanted to get a something that was going to be compatible with my Sony o, um, OLED TV here, the A8H. And I was previously using my Ankyo, which one is this one? The TXNR646, which is Dolby Atmos DTSX. It's got all the good sound codecs. However, it didn't have Dolby Vision, and this one did. And I kind of got pretty lucky here at Best Buy really quick when I was able to pick it up because I only had one in stock. And if, if you know of your shopping right now, everything is pretty desolate everywhere. Um, stock is pretty limited, and you almost have to order almost anything, even if you're able to go in doors and shop. So I just picked it up in a hurry so that I could use my Dolby Vision for my uh, Apple TV. And then of course the TV here itself has Dolby Vision on it. And I gotta say, I was really quite impressed with the sound on the Pioneer. I'm not even, I don't even really remember how many watts it says it supposedly does, like maybe 165 watts per channel whatever we all know that that's quite inflated and it doesn't really operate that way but nonetheless it still had really really good sound much better than my Ankyo that I'd been running here for a few years and this is about maybe four year old uh, Ankyo receiver a couple of unique options that I like about it is um, it does allow you to change the ohm selection in your speaker configuration to either 6 ohm or 8 ohm or 4 ohm or 6 ohm and in in below. It averages at an 8 ohm operation but I can even offer it down to 6 ohm, 4 ohm. I'm not sure how a 2 ohm works so I hooked up my Sonus Faber Chameleons here which are 4 ohm speakers that sound great. I love these speakers. I'll do some clips here in a second with these ones have tremendous low end and bass to those which is unusual of a normal tower that's not powered on bass you can actually feel um, those speakers are amazing i just switched to my red so i like the look of those as well so we'll do some clips here in a second but in the event if you want something pretty inexpensive the remote is is pretty easy to handle it doesn't have Wi-Fi. That's one of the drawbacks on it, but I was willing to accept that in exchange for being able to have Dolby Vision. It doesn't have Wi-Fi on it, so there's no app I can use to operate this here from my phone. Um, but it does sound really good. Um, I don't have, it's, the lag time is very, very short, if any at all. Operates really well, transitions through uh, inputs really good. So if you're looking for something that is DTSX, um, Dolby Atmos, and Dolby Vision enabled with HDR as well, it has all those capabilities there, and you don't want to spend a fortune, 
um, the Pioneer VSX 834 would be a good one for you. Now the other drawback, it doesn't have um, outputs for extended or for an uh, external amp. So that was kind of uh, not necessarily a deal breaker for me, obviously, but I always like to try to get something that's gonna enable that in the event I wanna have more power later on. Uh, but again, for under 400 bucks, uh, I think it's a really, really good piece of equipment. I'm pretty happy with this here. So let's check out some clips and give you a little bit of an idea of what this is like. So I wanted to do a quick video on this here. This is the Russound ADP-1.2, a speaker level to line level interface. And what this is, is it gives you the ability to hook up an amplifier, an um, ex, um, external amp to your receiver or, well, yeah, probably your receiver if it doesn't have the pre-outs. And there's a lot of receivers out there that are really good, but they're older models and they just end up either getting resold or they're just pushed off in the closet on a bench somewhere. And um, because a person decided to go to separates and they wanted to get an amplifier and their current receiver they were using didn't have the ability to accept the interconnects for um, pre-outs to hook up an amplifier. So I came across this. This is my second one. I have one already hooked up and I'm running it stereo. And I really like it. I think it actually works really well. There are a couple little drawbacks to it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about those here. Oh, it's kind of taped right here. Let me get that tape off. Here it is. So you take the speaker wire from your receiver or your amp and you put it into here. And those open up. They're a little, they're a little hard. Uh, that's one thing I kind of don't like about it is in order to get these up, you kind of, ha you have to push them pretty hard. And it just, this whole thing doesn't, it just seems a little delicate. So as you're pulling it up like that, um, it feels a little bit like maybe it might crack or break, but I think if you're just pretty um, fragile, I mean, you treat it, treat it okay, it'll, it'll open up. I haven't had any problems with it. Okay, so then what happens is, let's get that clear here. You're gonna take your speaker wire and put it in there. This is for two channels. So you have your left and right. Speaker wire from your receiver into here. And then from here, you're gonna put your interconnects, go from here into your amplifier. And I already have one hooked up, so we'll, we'll take a look at it. And I did one, but I think it works really good. So if you're considering one, uh, you can't go wrong. I got mine on eBay. I think I got this one for 39 bucks. And then the one that I'm currently using right now, I haven't hooked this one up yet. Um, I believe I got that one for like $24. I bought it used off of somebody and they work really good. And to my surprise, I'm able to run my amp. Everything works perfectly and sounds great. So I just thought I'd do a quick video if you come across this or if you were wondering how could I hook an amplifier up to my receiver or old older stereo that doesn't accept pre-outs. This is a good solution for it. Now, the way I have it hooked up because I just recently did it, um, I don't have it very, um, put together <laughs> very well. I just kind of hooked it up and, and got it sitting back there just to see, but I'm gonna put these in some housings that I ordered. So that way they're safe and secure and I don't risk um, you know shock or anything touching these or crossing the wires or anything like that. So uh, let's go take a look at how we got it set up. Okay, so right back here. And like I said, I don't have it hooked up very sophisticated. I just had it put back here really quick to see how it works. So you can see right here, I'm gonna try and get as close to that as I can. Let's see. Speaker wires go in that end and then interconnects go out. And then I have them going into my amplifier right there, which is my 
Carver Cinema Grand 5. So when I turn everything on here, I use my Apple TV. So Apple TV just kicked on. There goes my Pioneer receiver. And then let's, uh, and there, now that just kicked on. So the cool thing with that is what lets me know if this is working well, the Sunfire doesn't have a trigger out or input to turn it on. It has a um, detection sensor that turns on when you get power going through the interconnect. So this was one I was really, really curious about and wanted to make sure it was going to work for me, and it does. So turned on my amplifier, got the Pioneer VSX-834. Again, this is a nice, really good um, budget receiver if you're looking for one. does 4K, passes the 4K, and then it has all the codecs for sound that you need. It is only a 7.1 channel um, receiver though, so you can only hook up seven channels to it, I believe. Uh, actually, you know what, let me check that here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep, seven channels. <clears throat> I don't know if you could see that at all. It does have the, the less expensive um, clip connectors for all of the channels except for the front surround or the front mains um, but again still makes good connection still has good sound so let's check these out together here i did change out my sonus fibers for my ebt's and let's see again and not really going for anything sophisticated on sound here just Trying to put something together. We'll do, actually Night at the Museum has a pretty good sound effects scene here. All right, here where Ben Stiller discovers the T-Rex bones drink in the water. <laughs> we'll turn it up a little bit. Okay, so that is my Sony OLED A8H, 55 inch. So I've been very, very happy. I got a video on that there, a little review on this one if you um, are interested in some details on that TV. But I really like it. I enjoy it. No burning issues or problems whatsoever. I've had it probably now for three or four months now, maybe somewhere around there. But really like it. <clears throat> System here. These are my EBTVs. Pluto red you definitely uh, believe that's like a four and a half inch speaker in there with that one inch um, dome tweeter definitely need a subwoofer pioneer receiver sunfire um, amplifier and then 
I'm running what the sound I had in just now was just stereo. So the subwoofer I'm using now is my REL uh, 1205 HT. So it's the 12 inch model. I'm going to be doing a little small comparison on this one. It's only a 500 watt um, home theater sub, 500 watt sub compared to the other subwoofers that I have. So I got a video of that one coming out here soon too. Comparing it to a 1000 watt sub, which is the Golden Ear um, Super Sub 8. Big pros and cons on both of those. But I do like the rail. I like, like the look of it. I haven't taken the plastic off yet because I have kids. And for those of us that have kids, well, we know what they like to do with our equipment. So there you have it. That was the Rust Sound ADP 1.2. And if you don't have means of being able to hook up an amplifier to your current receiver, that could solve your issues there for you. So there you go. Okay, so there you have it. Went over a quick um, little product um, review there for you guys. For a couple of things this is a little bit different than what i normally do i normally in speakers and home theater and so on, so on but i came across these two items here and i thought it would be very interesting and maybe some of you guys would appreciate that so i thought i'd put a video out there thanks for watching we hope you enjoyed it uh, if you have any questions or comments please feel free to drop some links or information or anything down below and we'll answer those as soon as we can thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time